Hey guys, Arkan Templar here with a character profile of Rob Stark. Now I know it's weird that I'm only doing it now, but I had actually done one a while ago and it hadn't saved or something, so we're redoing it. So Rob Stark. Well, what can you say about Rob Stark? Rob Stark, I think, is one of the best examples of um, Game of Thrones playing with tropes and playing with expectations. He is in many ways the ideal king, or um, kind of what, what people always say they want in a leader. Ironically, giving people everything they want in the leader makes him an absolutely horrible leader. Uh, there's always been a tension, and this has always been a theme in Christianity, of um, uh, real-world uh, temporal leaders having to do things that are unsavory and immoral for the good of their country and their realm um, versus having trying to stick to their honor, stick to their morals, etc. So Rob Stark is a character who makes no compromises. Everything he does is for the good of the realm. Everything he... Sorry, not for the good of the realm. Everything he does is honorable. Everything he does is noble. Everything he does is true. He always tells the truth. He always does... does what's um, what's expected of him as being a noble, honorable king. And ironically enough, that meets the real world. And what happens when that meets the real world is it explodes on contact. Um, much like, um, I forget what they're called, whatever those metals are that explode when you put them in water. Uh, halogens? Much like a halogen that um, meets water, um, Rob Stark explodes when he... Uh, comes into contact with reality because he's utterly incapable of being a king now I know what you're saying but he's a great warrior he's he's a great leader of men people respect him people like him he's honorable he's brave he's true he's loyal now all these things are true and that's kind of the joke that he's the king everybody wants but when they actually get him he's an utter disaster in contrast to someone like Tywin Lannister, who's a lying, cheating, backstabbing, conniving um, bastard, um, but who's a competent leader and does a good job managing things and wins in the end. Rob Stark, pretty much every decision he makes um, is, is very questionable. And I think it shows that within kind of extreme moralism, in a complete inability to compromise, there is an arrogance, a selfishness, and a narcissism. Um, Rob's commitment to his honor leads to the ruin of his kingdom and his people, and he doesn't really seem to care very much. So let's go through his decisions. The first decision he makes is to call the banners and march south. Why does he do this? Because his father was arrested for being a dumbass. Now you're saying, well, well, Rob had to go save his father. That was the honorable thing to do. Yeah, but Ned had kind of dug his own grave. Ned was fucking stupid. Ned went down south when he really shouldn't have. He didn't bring enough guards and troops with him to protect himself. He played a game that he despised, that he had no idea what the hell he was doing. But he played it anyways. Um, he, he told Cersei what he was... Um, what he was planning he trusted Littlefinger Ned just screwed up in every way possible um, playing the Game of Thrones Ned sealed his own fate um, at this point Rob should have done what most rulers do and go okay my father fucked up what am I going to do am I going to challenge the might of the Iron Throne by myself because this is before Renly rebelled so this is when he would be the only person to um be fighting off um, the other six kingdoms plus the Riverlands. Um, so, yeah, so is it the time to raise my armies and, and fight all these guys off? Or is it a time to bend the knee, try to figure out what's going on, and plot revenge? Um, Rob goes, I am honorable. I have to ride south even though there's no hope of victory. And um, try to get my father back and get revenge for my father. Well, that's all well and good, but tens of thousands of your people are going to die. Um, the king who knelt is, is honored because he spared the north a war against dragons. Um, and he said, look guys, I can't, I can't really do anything about this. I can't really, um, 
I can't really fight off um, dragons. I'm just going to bow. And no one's going to get killed. Our, our towns and cities aren't going to be burned to the ground. We're going to lose anyway, so I might as well spare my people that. Uh, Rob doesn't make that decision. He goes, I'm going to do what's honorable. I'm going to ride south. Okay. So then he lets them crown him king. Which basically means once he got, allows them to crown himself king, he can't go back at this point. <laughs> um, they'll never accept him kneeling. They'll never accept a negotiated peace. He's basically committed to fighting the war to the end. Okay, well, this is a bad scenario, but he still has some advantages. The north is a fortress. Uh, Moat Kalen blocks all access to the north, and the idea of invading it with a fleet um, and having to supply your army that is amphibiously embarked uh, from the sea is almost impossible, as the Ironborn found out. And they have the largest fleet in Westeros. So, if Rob had just declared independence, fortified the neck, and just said, okay, the North is an independent kingdom now, that probably would have worked. Um, that would have at least had some chance of success. Uh, the South probably would have attacked Mo Kalen a couple times, sent some ships, but eventually had to give up and basically de facto recognize independence. Uh, but he didn't do that because he's like, I have to march south and I have to avenge my father, whatever the hell that means. So he marches south and then the Riverlands join him and declare for him. He should not have accepted this because he's like, well, they're my family and I have to help my family out. Yes, but the Riverlands is in the exact middle of the continent. It has no natural defenses. It doesn't have strong levees. It's, it's a weak, wealthy... Um, land that's impossible to defend because it's surrounded on all sides. Um, the north is almost an island. And basically he's accepting a, a difficult to reach because you have to march all the way from the north um, new part of his kingdom uh, which cannot be defended, etc. So basically he's um, accepting a completely new front in the war. Or a main front in the war, I suppose we could say, because the north isn't really a front because it's impossible to invade. So he's accepting a place that is possible to invade that doesn't have the strength to defend itself. Um, so he's bringing tens of thousands of northmen down to defend an indefensible position. Okay, well, what does he do from there? Um, Renly offers him an alliance. He says, okay, you can call yourselves the king of the north and the riverlands, but you have to bend the knee and you have to submit to the Iron Throne. You can keep the title king because the Iron Throne is basically an empire anyways. Okay, and he's like, no, I or Stannis should be king, and I'm the king in the north. Well, Rob, that's very noble of you, and that's very nice, and I'm sure people like that, but there's no scenario under which you can win this war. Um, you don't have the forces to, in, to enforce your kingdom. You have two of the seven kingdoms. Um... You have two of the seven kingdoms, and your opponents have far more troops than you. And even if they don't have more troops than you, um, eventually the War of Five Kings is going to end. And when it does end, you're going to be severely, severely outnumbered. Which is exactly what happened when it did end with a Lannister victory, and Rob was left basically alone fighting off the rest of his opponents. Um, so that was really obvious that that was going to happen. Um, but no, he's like, no, we can't make an alliance with Renly. We can't bend the knee to the throne. Uh, we can't really make an alliance with Stannis anymore, even though Stannis kind of sucks and is the weakest member. Uh, maybe we'll make an alliance with the Ironborn. Um, I trust Theon because he's, I was raised with him and I'm just a trusting person and Theon will be honorable. He swore an oath to me. Theon wouldn't double-cross me, would he? Um, Theon was very obviously going to double-cross him, and that's exactly what he did. But he sent him back, and then the Ironborn attacked him in the back. Um, why he thought the Ironborn were trustworthy, I don't know. The Ironborn are backstabbing cocksuckers, and they've always been backstabbing cocksuckers. And their entire culture is based on rape and pillage, so I don't understand why he thought he could trust them, but it was the honorable thing to do, to send back his best friend, his blood brother to help him enforce his claim to the kingdom of the north so so that happened so by doing the just and honorable thing uh rob stark had succeeded in somehow 
going into a war in which everyone was against the Iron Throne, including himself, but which he had no allies, and no one was willing to help him out. Especially after Liza refused to lend him aid, he should have realized, well, there's really not much we can do. Uh, we might as well just take Renly's deal, maybe try to negotiate the North um, not having to pay as much taxes and reducing other feudal obligations in exchange for um, bending the knee. But he says, no, we aren't going to make an alliance with Renly. We aren't going to make an alliance with Stannis. We're just going to fight this by ourselves. Okay, well, under what situation could they have won the war? There is none. The Riverlands are always going to be open for attack. The South is always going to have more troops. The South is always going to be trying to take the Riverlands back. Um, there's no circumstances under which they would have accepted the Riverlands leaving. There's no circumstances under which uh, they would have let the Riverlands go. So it's just condemning his people to a generation-long war over a piece of land that he, he and his house has no claim to. Um, and that has historically never been part of the North, um, and has never been under his authority or the authority of his house. So, nothing about Rod Stark's plan made any sense. He could win every battle for the next hundred years, and they would never acknowledge the independence of his kingdom. Um, even if he marched on King's Landing and, I don't know, took King's Landing, which is against the entire... Um, reason d'etre of his, his kingdom that still wouldn't end the war. The Lannisters are always going to fight. The Tyrells are always going to fight. He's never going to be able to hold the Riverlands. So he could have just said, uh, well guys, this, this didn't really work out. I have to save the North. The Ironborn kind of invaded. You guys just bend the knee. I'm sure everything will work out. Uh, bye. And then left. But he didn't because he's like, no, I am honor bound to defend my family even if it costs the lives of all my people. And that's just what Rob Stark is. He's just, I'm going to do the honorable thing, etc. Whereas Tywin Lannister's like, well, I'm going to do what's best for me and for the kingdom I rule over. And I'm going to do that, and I'm going to win, and, and stuff is, is going to work out okay. And it does largely for him. And it does for House Lannister um, in the end, although they, they suffer a lot of losses, but they, they do win the War of Five Kings, and Rob Stark loses, and all the Starks die. So, who's more successful? Uh, Tywin's blood does sit on the Iron Throne, and a Stark no longer sits in Winterfell. Um, so yeah, so so none of this really makes any sense, and then there's the whole Jane Westerling affair, and he's like, I have to marry her because it's honorable, even though it will lead to the deaths of tens of thousands of people, because the phrase will leave the Alliance, and um, I won't have access to the South anymore. And it's just a really, really bad idea. But he's like, no, I, I can't compromise. Um, I can't do... Uh, I can't fulfill my most basic duty as a king to protect my people and to make decisions in the best interest of my people because my honor comes first. And that is, I think, in summary, the point I'm trying to get across. That Rob Stark is a, is a profoundly selfish man who's willing to put... Um, his personal desires, he's willing to put his um, his sense of honor and his conscience ahead of the lives of his people and of his kingdom. He doesn't really seem to care about them. He seems primarily concerned with looking good, with, with, with doing what makes him able to sleep at night. But the crown rests heavy. Um, as Constantine kind of exemplified in being baptized like a week before his death, to, to rule a kingdom... Uh, requires you to do horrible things. To rule a kingdom requires you to um, do things that would make other men turn white with terror and with horror over how bad they are. Um, that That is what is required of being a king. It's not a job for the faint of heart. It's not a job for, for bleary-eyed idealists. You can be a good person and be a king like Jaehaerys the um, old king was. He was a good man and he was a good king. But you have to know how to compromise. You have to know how to try and do what's best for your people and what's best for the realm, even if you find it distasteful. And he's just completely incapable of doing that. And that is why he fails as a king and as a human being. And why the complete destruction of the North and the Riverlands is ultimately his fault. 
This is Arjun Templar with a character profile of Rob Stark, signing out.